Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Today, we're going to take a close look at the Hercules Forced Rotation Dual Action Polisher. So this is a variation or a, an imitation of the Flex 3401. So it oscillates and rotates, both forced. And we're going to have the 3401 Flex next to us nearby so we can compare now and again. We're going to be bringing up pros and cons, just as we always do on the channel here, of tools and products. And uh, one of the pros we could start with is the, the Hercules polisher can be picked up locally. So if you run into uh, a job where you need to polish or if you're in a pinch and one of your polishers go down, you can run out locally and pick it up without having to order it and wait for the horrible shipping that we have in this country um, to get it to you. And another pro um, for this polisher is the price. The Flex 3401, well over $400, and the Hercules, $119, with a coupon under $100. Unboxing. In the kit, you get the polisher itself, an awesome 25-foot cord, a soft cord, which is really good to see. You get an Allen key and the directions, and you get two caps for if you want to remove the platypus handle. Two things that aren't in there that will bring up the first con, uh, no replacement brushes. Also, uh, it comes with a six inch backing plate, so you need six inch pads. I don't like those types of pads. If they wanna turn it into a really impressive kit, send along a five inch backing plate as well and an extra set of brushes. Also, the tactile feedback on the dial is terrible. I would love to have some nice uh, satisfying clicking going on. It, it just feels like it's plastic on plastic. Uh, here we have the brushes. That's how you get to the brushes to replace them. The speed dial, uh, the locking trigger, and let's put the Flex 3401 next to it as a comparison with size and shape. And let me give you the dimensions on length, width, uh, girth, and weight. When it comes to weight, the Hercules is slightly lighter than the 3401, which is good to see. When it comes to sound, when it comes to vibration, we can get a little bit of a help with uh, the app on the phones here. They're not 100% exact, but they'll show you a difference between the two polishers. When looking at the numbers, the flex may seem a bit more fine-tuned. Using the two polishers, however, it's hard to tell the difference. And that 25-foot cord is magnificent. Let's get a little bit of a closer look at the Hercules. If we start to take the backing plate apart and remove that, loosen it up, separate it, you'll see that the gears are similar to the 341. You do need to keep this area well lubricated. 
Me, personally, I would be replacing this with Wolf Heads Red, um, both in this area and in the gearbox. And all you need to do is remove these three screws here, Phillips heads, to get to the gearbox. Let's start to tear this thing down and take an even closer look. When we have the gearbox apart, you'll see that that is packed with that uh, junky factory grease. They'll try to tell you that that's the grease that is spec for that machine. Well, they can keep it. I'd rather have my own in because it runs smoother, it runs cooler, and the machine will last much longer with it. Time to take a look at the business end of the polisher. This is the motor. Some things I like, some things I don't. I don't like to see the mess on the laminations here. That's splatter from the coating on the field winding. A little bit sloppy, but... I love to see the coating on the field windings. I also love to see this epoxy that uh, holds together the field windings where it's attached to the commutator. Vibration can knock those loose, shorten the polisher. Sealed bearings. I'm going to take a look and investigate if these are the good Japanese bearings. We shall see. I love the directional fan to keep the polisher cool while the motor is running. And the laminations are nice and clean cut. If you want to change out your brushes, had they sent an extra set, all you'd have to do is remove these caps, pull out the brushes, and slide in the new ones. Hopefully new ones can be ordered. More field winding and every strand is coated and it is good to see. Everything is nice and clean. The wiring is clean, brass connectors. Uh, I really like what I see so far. Will this hold up when you have the polisher under load? Time will tell. Let's get this thing back together and get to work. It also would be wonderful if they could get this thing to spin clockwise. It spins counterclockwise like the 34 one, so it takes a bit of muscle memory to get used to. But I will repeat, I do like what I see so far. Time will tell with the polisher under load on a daily basis, and I will pull up video and footage of the polisher doing real-world work. So far on the channel, I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. That could raise a bit, but time will tell. And that will do it for this video. This has been Brian from Apex Detail. Catch you in the next one.